before the earthquake, after the earthquake, before the earthquake, after the earthquake. So what essentially happened is that this entire island and all the neighboring islands, really the entire area around the rupture zone was suddenly, rapidly, really in the time span of seconds, lifted upwards by about four meters. Welcome to the Geo Show. Today we are breaking down the massive 8.8 .8 Richter scale earthquake that occurred offshore the Kamchatska Peninsula of Russia earlier this week. And uh, this was uh, actually one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded. And it has led to what's probably the largest evacuation in world history. So uh, the earthquake caused a huge tsunami to form. And uh, this tsunami propagated across the entire Pacific Ocean, where people were evacuated basically all the way from Russia, all around to the United States, South America. And in total, I think uh, roughly 3 million people were evacuated, which may be more than ever in, in history. Oceanic plate is uh, moving towards the Asian continent. And uh, as it uh, uh, collides, it is denser, so it will subduct, which means that it will move underneath the, uh, the Eurasian continent. So in order to understand what happens uh, in this earthquake, we have to uh, take a, we have to really understand this subduction zone uh, concept. So let's make a, a cross section. So what we see here is that this is the uh, oceanic plate, so it's much deeper and it is pushed underneath the continental plate. And all of this is part of the continental plate. So here's our beautiful cross section. On the right hand side we have the uh, Pacific plate. And it's sliding underneath, so subducting uh, the, the land, which is the Eurasian plate. All right. And as that happens, a lot of friction is uh, uh, is formed here on the boundary between these plates. So obviously these plates are irregular, so there are all sorts of uh, features on top of them. They are not perfectly smooth. So as a result, uh, you would get a lot of uh, rubbing and, and, and uh, rocks getting stuck against each other on the point of contact between these rigid plates. So now what I've done is I've simplified it even further just to show you that as this moves down, it sort of brings down this uh, uh, Eurasian plate with it a little bit. So it, they, they, they're stuck together and this is sort of bent downwards very slightly, so only a couple of meters. Now what that means is that once they break free, so once the earthquake occurs and this boundary will actually rupture, then uh, this whole piece of the continent will actually slide upwards, spring upwards like, a, like an elastic spring. And that is important here because uh, that is what causes the tsunami to form. So just to clarify, as this earthquake happens, right, it, it basically ruptures across this point of contact, two things happen. So on the one hand, uh, we get vibrations. So all of this begins to shake heavily because they're rubbing together in a very intense motion, right? A lot of pressure has built up. And it is actually the amplitude of the shaking, so the up and downward motion during the displacement, so during the rupture, that that amplitude, so the height of the, of the sort of spring wave, that uh, corresponds to the, the Richter scale. So in this case, that... Uh, comes down to a, a, a Richter scale, or rather a, a, a momentum scale of 8.8. .8. We'll talk about that later. Then the second thing that happens is what I explained earlier, is that this other plate bends, uh, uh, springs upwards uh, suddenly. And then you could say, thirdly, the, the subducting plate will move downwards into the earth uh, slightly. And all these three things basically happen at the same moment in time. Right, so the reason I'm uh, explaining this 
uh, is because uh, it's very important to understand that these are two completely separate things. So they both happen simultaneously, the vibrations and the displacement. But the one is really what causes damage for, uh, what, what, what makes the earthquake uh, cause damage. Uh, so the Richter scale is uh, typically corresponding to how much damage occurs because, of, because it relates to the amount of vibration. But it really doesn't have anything directly to do with the formation of the tsunami. Right? The tsunami is entirely due to the uh, displacement of the plates. And most importantly, the upward displacement of the, uh, the, the continental plate. Because what happens is that all of this water, right, all of this is ocean. So this is a huge column of water that will suddenly be moved upwards. And you can imagine that this will, will have the effect of causing a massive wave, essentially. So to demonstrate this concept of the upwards displacement, uh, we're going to look at uh, an area that was affected by another huge mega thrust earthquake and corresponding tsunami, which is the disastrous mega tsunami that occurred in Indonesia in 2004. So we're zooming into a small island that lies really close to where this rupture took place. And uh, if you look at the older satellite photos, then you can see that uh, the reef, so basically the fringe reef, the area uh, where the corals live just offshore of the island, is completely submerged, right? It's this gray line across that sort of fringes this island. And then if we fast forward to a more recent satellite image after the earthquake took place, boom. We can see that a huge portion of this reef is now uh, above water, right? So I'll toggle back and forth so you can see this clearly, right? So before the earthquake, after the earthquake, before the earthquake, after the earthquake. So what essentially happened is that this entire island and all the neighboring islands, really the entire area around the rupture zone was suddenly, rapidly, really in the time span of seconds, lifted upwards by about four meters at, the, at the, the highest amplitude, right? So in this area, we have a huge upward displacement of almost four meters, which you have to imagine takes place across really this huge area. So all of this, this area, everything nearby this rupturing plate is suddenly rapidly moved upwards and it, the entire ocean essentially is lifted. Now, obviously, uh, the 2004 Indonesia tsunami is a totally different event than the one we are really talking about, but it's, it's basically analogous, right? So this is a, a GIF, uh, an animation that shows you that this water column is rapidly uplifted, boom, and then this uplifted water is uh, dissipated in every direction, and that really is a megathrust tsunami. So this is a really nice uh, image on the left that shows you the slip, so the displacement across this uh, fault line in uh, Kamchatka, where the tsunami took place. And these rupture zones, they always have this uh, half ellipse shape, roughly. So they have an epicenter, which is right there in the middle. That's where most of the displacement takes place. That's really the nucleus where the tsunami uh, emanates from. And then uh, all of this area really contributes to lifting up this water column. And this lifted water column as a whole will form uh, the tsunami, of course. Now, earlier I said that the Richter scale uh, does not correspond to the height of the tsunami, which technically is true. But in reality, obviously, the amount of vibration is very closely related to the displacement. So uh, essentially the, the Richter scale is related to the amplitude of the vibration, right? So if we have this nice uh, vibration that takes place, then we measure that on a seismograph and the amplitude to so the height of these vibrating waves, that is what corresponds to the Richter scale. And people always say, so it's a logarithmic scale. So that means that if something is uh, seven on the Richter scale, it's 10 times 
uh, more powerful than if something is uh, six on the Richter scale. Now, and this is something that is uh, really technically incorrect. So it's even more extreme than that because the Richter scale is dimensionless. It doesn't correspond to uh, uh, any uh, length or velocity or anything like that, but it can be expressed in terms of energy. If you express this uh, into energy, then a, a one point increase on the Richter scale is not a 10 times uh, higher energy event, it's actually a 32 times higher energy event. So to demonstrate uh, what that means is that we have here an energy budget of all the earthquakes that have occurred in the past 120 years. So really all of the earthquakes uh, that have ever occurred uh, in modern recorded history. And all of the smaller ones, so all the tiny earthquakes that are one, two, three, four, five, six, are all in this yellow mini slice. And this huge blue slice is a single mega, mega, mega earthquake. So the 1960 Valdivia earthquake in Chile is the most powerful earthquake ever recorded, 9.5 on the Richter scale. And it's so energetic, right, that this, this energy scale is, sort of, is so uh, non-linear that this one event accounts for uh, uh, more than a third of all the energy ever released by all the earthquakes ever measured, which is crazy. Now, if we look through this list of uh, these really big earthquakes, so all the ones that are listed here are, of course, uh, higher than eight. Uh, point 0.8 or 8.8 .8 or higher and uh, each and every one of them is a mega thrust earthquake that occurred around the Pacific Ocean right the Pacific Ring of Fire is what it's called so this is really uh, the only system in the world that is capable of producing such massive super earthquakes and uh, you can see some that are very famous for causing big tsunamis as well so the Sumatra earthquake we discussed earlier was a 9.1 right a huge chunk, a huge pizza, pizza slice of this energy budget. And the one that occurred just last week, yeah, the 2025 Kamchatka earthquake, 8.8, .8, is uh, highlighted here in white, is also really a fairly significant part of, uh, let's say, a small pizza slice of the entire energy budget. So we're really talking about a super mega powerful event. So it's really understandable why people uh, essentially across the entire Pacific Ocean were evacuated, right? Because people knew they can calculate uh, based on initial measurements that this is a very powerful event. And uh, really uh, this tsunami wave will uh, propagate all over the Pacific Ocean, right? So people were evacuated all the way across North America, Chile, Antarctica, nobody lives there, but maybe if the penguins lived there, they would be evacuated. So everyone here around the entire Pacific Ocean was evacuated, which is, I mean, it's kind of crazy, right? It's like a third of the entire globe. So here's a nice image that shows you uh, where all the tsunami warnings took place. So the epicenter here is this uh, red box. And obviously places like Hawaii were the first places to uh, where people thought oh, it's relatively close and it's in direct line of sight, so there's nothing to obstruct this wave. So these got a really, really intense tsunami warning. But now in this case, uh, the distance to the epicenter is really important, right? So this little star represents our epicenter. And uh, this is one times X distance. And then once you're two times X distance away from the epicenter, uh, the, the power is not spread out over uh, twice the distance. No, it's spread out over a circle that is uh, 2 pi r. And uh, uh, one way that this is uh, uh, evident is that all this, this tsunami in, in uh, Hawaii and in California and in Chile was really not that destructive, simply because the distance is so vast. So if you compare that with Indonesia, the epicenter was roughly over here and the distance to where this uh, uh, tsunami occurred is much, much smaller. So most of the damage was done here 
in these islands, Sumatra and Java. And they're really only, uh, what is it, about uh, yeah, 200 kilometers from the epicenter. Now, one important point, which I guess is another misconception about tsunamis. So let's draw again uh, what it looks like. So this is our seafloor, right? We have a trench and then we have an oceanic plate and it goes like this. And then this uh, bounces up really quickly. So uh, really what happens is that uh, the water column gets pushed upward, boom, across the rupture zone. And you get a huge bubble, which then propagates outwards. Now, what this means is that if you're uh, a little tiny boat on top of the ocean here, then uh, you hardly even notice this wave. So this wave will only have uh, roughly the height of the, uh, of the vertical displacement, or, which is only a couple meters. So maybe like uh, three or four meters. And uh, 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 it spreads out very quickly, like I just explained. So this, this little boat really doesn't, uh, is not really affected that much. Now, if you get closer to land, then uh, the wave will be confined. So as it propagates uh, further and further towards the land, it will come closer and closer to the beach and that's when it will really get some serious amplitude. So the, the really uh, tall waves, they arrive uh, on the coast, but they are not really the type of wall of water that you often see in movies, right? So a much better way to uh, explain the geometry of one of these mega thrust uh, uh, tsunamis is not uh, a wall of water. So it's not something very tall and steep. It's, it's a wave that is only a meter or so tall, maybe two meters tall, but more than a kilometer long. So it's a huge volume of water and it keeps on rushing across the land. It keeps on coming but it's not really a wall that wipes out all these buildings. So a much better way to describe it is a, a wave that is very, very long, right? A, 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 a kilometers long wave. Now this is actually some really cool footage uh, of the earthquake uh, really close to the epicenter. So th this is not really the tsunami. This is the tsunami and you can see that uh, it's not a wall of water, right? It's really only a meter high but it's just a rush of water that continues for, for many, many minutes because it's so long, right? The volume is so vast. And that's really where the danger lies. So it's picking up buildings and it's causing all sorts of crazy destruction. Fortunately, this area in Kamchatka is extremely remote. So uh, very few people uh, live there. And therefore the damage to people and infrastructure was uh, relatively uh, minor. So that concludes today's Geo Show episode. So another very interesting event, right? A mega thrust tsunami. And uh, yeah, there's a lot more that you can say about this. So these mega thrust tsunamis, they uh, can have all sorts of additional effects. So we actually saw in this case, uh, a volcano erupt because of the earthquake, which is something that is uh, quite rare, but it does happen when things go above eight in the Richter scale. So these are really, really powerful, really, really cool events that cause all sorts of hazards and interesting phenomena. So we're definitely gonna do uh, more videos about this, this type of disaster uh, in the future. But for now, uh, I wish you a nice day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our, uh, our channel so we can make more cool videos in the future.